Hey, what's up, World 2 family? My name is Rocky Aviles. I'm back again for another video. And uh, the last time I was here, I did the convention box test, the one that you're going to go take at the welding lab. But this time, we're going to do a simulation the exact same way that it'll be out there in the field. Sometimes they'll be tighter, sometimes they'll be wider, but it all depends where you go to and where you land. But I guess that's enough talking. It's going to be carbon for uh, educational purposes. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, guys, but one more thing before we start. I got to let y'all know about the pocket hoods because uh, this is a whole different environment. So you can't use your regular hood because you're not going to fit. But you could also use this. But sometimes, you know, the goggles are perfect. I like it a lot. I like this, this, this design a lot. But sometimes it gets in your way. You can't fit. You can't see the root. You know, it's pretty good for, like, filling cap. But for the root, you can't really see it. So we're going to need something that's more to your face like this. Yeah, it looks funny. <laughs> But it gets the job done. This one's brand new. I have one like this, but it's, you know, real raggedy, real old because it's used and everything. But, I mean, you could use something like this, something that's really flat on your face. That way you could, you know, if you have not such a big head, you could, you know, slide into things. You know what I mean? Uh, but other than that, that's all you're going to need for the, uh, for the uh, pocket. You could use, I mean, you could learn how to use whatever you want, right? But I, for me, I like this, you know, something real flat. Or you could just make your own. I've seen people make it out of cardboard, you know what I mean? Put a, uh, a wooden lens and tape all over it or whatever, and it'll work like that too. For the TIG rig, I'm gonna use a rocker. There's another one called the Twister. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, also made by Weltech, but uh, I don't see no difference in them. So I just use both of them. All right, guys, so for this pipe, I tagged it at the top and at the bottom. I didn't do the sides because, you know, there's stuff on the way. You know what I mean? And, I mean, it, who would wanna do a tie-in where you can't see it, you know, so. I'd rather just pick it all up all the way I can, put my head up here, pick it up again, you know, instead of tying in, making sure I tie it in, I just, I just go ahead and roll with it. Let's go ahead and get to it. I'm gonna tell you how I do the rule, how I position myself and how I look at it. That way I can put my head in somewhere, just like the last time how I did on the uh, convention box test. All right guys, so right now I'm doing the route. I'm doing it at uh, 95 amps. I have a 70S2 332 wire. And on this side, on the left side, it was a little tight, you know, than, than the other side, because the pipe was a little bit wavy. So uh, I had to have to wait a little bit and, you know, wait till it keyholes and I'll um, push the wire in, push the wire in, push the wire in. But sometimes, man, you could see the root, like how I said the last video, sometimes you can't, you know, but as long as you can see your tungsten um, hit the, hit both bevels, you know what I mean? Like, like kind of like wash it onto the walls and you'll be good. But um, right here, I, I can see the root entirely because I have space for my head to see it. So. I had to keyhole it a little bit and dip it, kind of like if it was like an alloy in, in a way. And, and this is like a demo setup. This is how it's gonna be out there in the field. You know, I mean, 10 times, like nine times out of 10, you're gonna see stuff like this in the field. For these jobs, it's mostly double time though, like 40 and up, 40 an hour and up. And if they're not paying double, you know, it's paying like 47, you know, up there. It's, these jobs are always up there because it's specialty work, so. And then also a tip for your left hand, if you're barely starting with your left hand, you could even go lower, you know, on the amps. That way you could just go slower and, uh, you know, practice on it if you want to. Um, I didn't expect for this side to be this tight, you know, uh, that I had to keyhole it. But, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you just gotta adapt to your surroundings and, uh, you know, try to make the best of it. You learn as you go all the time. Now on the right side, since I had like a bigger gap, since uh, on the other side uh, kind of was kind of tight. Um, on the right side, I'm, I'm running at 100, and I have a, a 70s2 one eighth rod. The right side is always going to be easier because I mean that's the way I started, you know, with my right hand. So I have more control over my right hand and my left. And always, I mean, you can't use a straight wire in here. You always gotta like bend it some way, somehow. That way you could get those uh, penetration on, on the pipe. Because if you don't, you'll like bubble it up and it'll start dripping like water and it'll fall out. You always wanna bend your wire like this is the J. You could bend it however you want. Um, that way you could tackle those, those, uh, those devils in good. All right guys, so on the hot pass, um, this is a, a four inch schedule 40, so you could almost flush it 
you know, on the hot pass. A lot of people do, but I don't like to flush it all the way because I want to get good penetration. But right now I'm running at uh, 130 on the hot pass. And I try to go a little bit flat, uh, fast. That way, you know, I don't get no suck back and stay on it too long. Um, but it's good practice though, you know, try to move that wrist back and forth, try to hit both bevels at the same time though. Never, never try to skip a bevel at all. I have a little habit where like I try to uh, get like each end almost the same, just like a little stack on top of each other. Cause if you weave it long, you know, you might not catch that bevel. So you gotta like kind of keep it tight. Keep it tight and you know all the way until you can. And if you and if you gotta lower the amps too, I mean on your left hand side you can too. Just lower it. That way um, you can hit every spot because you don't want nothing to shoot bad. All right, guys. So now we're going on to the field. But on this field, I'm running at uh, 150. So I got it at 150. And, um, um, and it's the same technique, you know, but now I'm running at 150, so you gotta move like a little bit, not a little bit fast, you know, but you gotta just make sure you hit them bevels. You know, if you gotta go slow, go slow, but don't go too slow, because you don't wanna suck nothing back. You know, just be consistent, you know, move it. Don't stay at a spot too long, because it will suck back. These new stuff, it's all alloys, uh, mostly. Uh, like I said, it's always different where you go, but for this one, um, I'm doing carbon, this just for uh, uh, educational purposes. All right, guys, so on the cab, if the pipe gets too high, you could always just lower down your amps, you know, instead of picking them back up, because the pipe is hot. So I'm gonna just lower it down to 140. Before you tackle anything, like how I always say before, I always look at it, and I try to see where I can fit my head, how I can position my body, that way I can be more comfortable, because I'm not gonna start welding if I'm gonna get a cramp, you know? So uh, I always try to make sure I'm good, I can move my hand, move my wrist, you know, I'll make sure I can look at the root, make sure I could, you know, make my best to look at the root or both walls at least. You know, uh, you never want to go into something, you know, putting yourself in a bind. I've seen guys get cramps <laughs> and it's funny, at, at, it's funny, but at the same time it's not because you can mess something up and lose your job. All right, guys, so that was a convention box simulator. Um, like I said before, um, they might be different in the field, you know, so, um, but if you have your own way on how to do this, you know, um, let us know below on the comments. But other than that, I'll be posting stuff on Snapchat and Instagram too from work. Not all the time, because you get in trouble. But uh, my Snapchat is uh, Rocky-So, R-O-C-K-Y-S-O, and my Instagram is Rocky Aviles, R-O-C-K-Y-A-V-I-L-E-S. But had a fun time shooting this video. Um, let me know if y'all like it, share it. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Snapchat and hopefully I see y'all out there. Y'all be safe.